three years ago, I was a supplier seeing the production of products that I was responsible for. And besides seeing the products, what really struck my mind was the huge amount of cutoffs that, that was caused during that production. What is happening with all that waste, I asked. Well, it's getting burnt, they said. Why, I asked. Well, Anna, it's just always been that way. Big industries change very slowly. But since we're in the middle of a climate emergency, changing slowly is not an option. Time is running against us. Our planet is warming up faster than at any point in recorded history. And if that heating goes unchecked, it will continue to have a devastating effect on our planet. And there's a recent study that shows that three quarter of today's youth across the globe has climate anxiety. The youth is terrified about their future. And honestly, sometimes I feel the same. My future, the future of our planet is at stake. Or as Greta would say, our house is burning. So actually the supplier was right because the way that those products were made, they could only be burned. What I had seen at the supplier is the standard concept within today's linear economy. Take, make, dispose. We take resources from planet Earth and we make products out of them. The main resource for plastic products is crude oil. Crude oil is not only a limited, non-renewable resource, extracting it from the earth often also leads to major oil spills. And we've seen the pictures, major oil rigs in the middle of the oceans, huge endless pipelines and big refineries that exploit our planet. And sometimes I feel like we've almost gotten used to headlines about beaches and marine animals covered in black oil. So why do we still use primary materials then, you might ask? Well, it's cheap, it's easy, and it has always been that way. In this linear world after we take and make, we dispose, and often we dispose within hours after usage. And in fact, the worldwide plastic waste only out of all that plastic waste, only 9% is being recycled. 12% is being burned or so-called thermally recycled. And that leaves us with a shocking number of 79% of plastic waste that is still sticking around somewhere, either in landfill or in the ocean. 79%, isn't that crazy? And now speaking for the ocean, that makes up for 8 million tons of plastic waste every year. So that moment at the supplier, I realized that besides living a sustainable private life, I need to take action at work. So if you work in the industry too, I ask you to accelerate change with me. Instead of continuing with a linear economy, let's work on a circular economy that enables us to use our resources responsibly. Let's think in cycles, cycles that bring the waste we create to new usage and that fuel the demand for secondary materials. Sometimes I feel like in our heads and headlines, we're already there, but we're not, I mean, you just heard it, we only recycle 9%. So how can we change that? I strongly believe that we as humans can always act in multiple ways. First, we need to act as private individuals. We have power as consumers, and with every purchase, we contribute to a growth in demand for something. And we can choose whether that's the meat or the vegan burger. And we can also ask ourselves more questions. Am I really aware of the CO2 shadow that is being produced by my consumed decisions? Would I accept a more sustainable product with maybe less quality or a higher price? 
Am I aware of how to recycle my belongings and will I actually follow it? Or maybe also, can I repair my stuff? Well, we ask ourselves all these questions and I know we are all aware of what I just said. We recycle our paper and waste at home. We even go vegan. We buy bamboo toothbrush and Q-tips without plastic. We do many things in private life and we feel pretty good about it. And the rest, the bigger questions and the system change, that needs to be done by the industry and by politics, right? But who is the industry? We imagine it as big concrete buildings somewhere on the horizon, very untouchable. But if we look closer, the industry consists of us. In Germany, there are 45 million working people. Many of you are not only private individuals, but also work and act on behalf of the industry. So let's take that action and that mindset to work. We need to change the industry from within. So how can we combine that? How can we combine the action with the circular economy? Well, let's start with products. If you are working on products as a decision maker, a purchaser, designer, developer, whatever, let's talk about the products. First, let's talk about zero waste design. How can we really produce products with a minimum amount of waste, like no cutoffs, no unnecessary materials? If we do that from the beginning on, we don't even have to think about recycling. Second is the choice of materials. Let's ask ourselves, do I really need the primary material or can I use secondary material that has already been recycled? Very often, suppliers or also people, people that we ask have those solutions in their drawers. We, they, we just have to ask them. And the second thing is also, let's um, choose the connections wisely. The materials need to be chosen based on their recyclability. Only in that way we can enable a circular economy. And that brings me to part number three, the design for disassembly. How can those different materials really be taking, taking apart with a minimum amount of effort and explaining? Like no inseparable connections, no glues. Also, at home, we cannot repair things if they're glued together. But on a more industrial level, also screws and seams are problematic because for an industrial recycling process, sometimes it just purely takes too long. And even to you, sales and marketeers out of there, you can also ask yourselves, how can users really be informed and encouraged to actually do the recycling? How can circularity become a unique selling point and the use for secondary material a must-have? After I was at the supplier three years ago, I to told my colleagues about my vision. I told them that I'm really determined to make this product that I had seen circular. I told everyone and many people joined me. We redesigned and substituted the materials. We chose the right material composition that was fit for a circular economy. And of course it took quite some loops, but at the end, results were good. We had gotten rid of the entire amount of crude oil and we had minimized the carbon footprint. <laughs> After two years, that circular product had completely replaced the linear product that had always been that way. So changing products has a direct measurable impact. And especially in big company, I think what's great is that that impact scales up. But there's also immeasurable impact, like the motivation and inspiration that comes with it. Working towards a circular economy, towards the reduction of carbon footprint is what keeps me working for a big company. But what I've also noticed is that it inspires so many people around me to work on similar topics within their direct area of responsibility. And that's great. So the third thing that I've learned during this whole process is 
that we are all influencers. How you're treating the planet in your daily life, but also at work, it's being seen. You influence the people around you. You influence your family, your kids, your friends, but also your bosses, colleagues, and also your opponents. There is a critical mass on people taking action that will ultimately lead to unstoppable change. So today I ask you to join me in taking action. By stepping up, by not accepting, by questioning, and by being relentless. Let's not accept that it has always been that way when this way destroys our planet. Let's treat this crisis like the existential crisis it is. Time is running against us.